All right, welcome back everybody to Binge Town TV and our coverage of HBO Succession. So it's Monday, so last night was episode five, The Kill List. So we really get Matson back, which was a, a very welcome change. I thought he killed it this episode. But before, as always, we get into the juicy, juicy succession, <laughs> Waystar, Royco, Roy Adventure, uh, just very quick housekeeping business. Obviously, we are Binge Town TV. If this is your first time listening or if you're still trying to kind of test running us out, I would recommend when you make your decision that you do like us because that's the decision you'll make. Uh, that you subscribe on whenever you are listening on, whether you're watching our beautiful faces on YouTube or you're just listening to our beautiful voices on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever the hell, every other podcast uh, little thing that we're on. And then second note is going to be we have a separate feed that's just Succession. So it's Succession, a Bingetown TV podcast. If you're listening on that, then I highly recommend going to our main feed, which is just Bingetown TV, and you'll see all of the episodes that we cover and the best way to see all those episodes better organized probably than your podcast app is going to give you is going to be bingetowntv.com newly renovated by the wonderful james has tabs at the top that basically will bring you to all of our shows individually which is much better than just mindlessly scrolling through our entire catalog okay now that that's out of the way let's get into the fun stuff which is talking about the episode itself so like i said episode five the kill list and as we have done on these episodes, we don't really like to lollygag, so we'll jump right in. I am doing the executive summary of this episode, so I, <clears throat> I will begin. I'll begin, as always, by thanking everyone for coming. I appreciate the attention and the attendance. So, episode five, the CE bros and their teams prepare for the trip to Norway with a quick meeting, only to be briefly interrupted by mom and dad and a new invitation from Mattson that includes the whole squad on board the plane. Frank and Carl slap on some, some uh, slap on some compression socks. <laughs> Roman and Kendall death wrestle ogres, aka read documents. And Carolina and Jerry set the stage for the battle to come. Logan's wolves versus Matson's team of soft ass Europeans. The Waystar crew arrives at Chairman Matson's re-education camp, and the initial skirmish at brunch goes brutally as Hugo blabs about his dynamic metabolism, <laughs> and Tom fails to impress with his tree metaphor. On the mountaintop, the Sea Bros get dominated by Matson's unpredictability, condescending tone, and new offer that requires Daddy's crown jewel, ATN, to be folded back in. Round two goes just as poorly for Team Waystar, despite Greg's new intel on the kill list and Matson's bean pole. Greg himself <laughs> kicks off the disaster class by trying to one-up Tom with the economist's take on France, but instead has to be bailed out by the newly formed quad squad and gets compared to Europe's most infamous incestual family, the Habsburgs, on the way out. Excuse me, as my computer presses up everything that I was just looking at, where was I? Okay, <laughs> negotiation part two, electric boogaloo, impromptly begins as Kendall can't take a joke, and it goes so poorly that Kermit Kendall, face slipped by fire and a villainous smile, recruits Romy into a new plan to tank the deal. The party concludes with Matson and Shiv discussing how many bricks of blood is too many bricks of blood to send to an ex-lover <laughs> and an acknowledgement that the three ladies of Waystar have got the goods. Shiv starts the next day with some verbal sparring with Tom, while the Sea Bros ascend the gondola once again but with new plans. The Scooby-Doo plan is quickly exposed and Roman's righteous rage is finally released onto Matson as Matson pisses, with Roman vowing to ruin the deal no matter what because fuck you, I hate you. <laughs> Matson's promise to go around the two quickly comes to fruition as Frank reports on a new offer that is simply too good to turn down. The good news and the kill list reveal result in champagne celebrations for most of the team, while Shiv sends Matson a Snapchat memorializing her brother's defeat. And wow. that is episode five. That was good. That was a, that felt like a lot of like alliteration and like good I was words. <laughs> I, I had a lot of Bully. good words in it, Kyle. Good, really good words. <laughs> my um, <laughs> I guess like my iCloud is so full of data. It's so full. That sounded like a, the worst, weirdest humble brag ever. It's just full because I don't pay for extra space, I guess. <laughs> so it always like fucks up my notes app. And I was like, holy shit, I got lost in the middle of that. But it looked like yeah. Carrie doing doing her little ATN audition. Yeah, if you could see the whole thing, my arms were flailing around under here. But thankfully, I kept them out of the shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all about so the we arms can, we learned. <laughs> we can move on from the executive summary uh, and go right into our favorite moments. So I, I obviously just talked a ton, so I can pass it to 
whichever one to if you two would like to I'm do being it. tapped more more arms behind the scenes um favorite moment <laughs> <laughs> I really I just wrote down and it, it you know veers into quote territory but when Greg's trying to explain the new quad mm -hmm. dynamic and he's like I lost you. the family oh, oh no Oh no, tell us when we're back. Yeah, hold on. Tell us when we're back. Tell us when we're back. Tell us when we're back. I think you're good right now. Okay. The cool. the video itself was kind of cut and then the audio was fine. And then it just started. It literally was just going, uh, 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 uh. Okay. Uh. So we want to my hot spot. Like, do we think that could be better? Before I did do a hot spot for House of the Dragon one time because my parents was bad, but we're gonna lose all of that. I mean, we can end it and then start with favorite moments oh, and you can't piece them together. Switch. I can't switch uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, no. Let's just rock it and see how far we can get. And if it keeps doing it, then maybe we'll end it, start the yeah. hot spot. And then, okay. So just yeah, redo your whole moment. I would just... Yep. Yeah. Okay. Favorite moment, um, which veers into quote territory, is Greg talking up the new squad, the quad. And then when he says, the family, and she was like, the family fuck and i just it just <laughs> was, was so, so perfect good. shiv was kind of on fire i feel last episode with like the zingers but that was my favorite moment yeah that was good greg maybe was a little better this episode for for me i don't know greg is just i don't I, uh, flop town still but for me the moment was roman and kendall uh deciding the tank to deal i think in general for a lot of things I'm like what do Kendall and Roman actually want so in this sense it was nice to ha to have them actually talk through it and even Roman says at one point like we are selling are we winning or losing I can't tell and it's nice for them to actually talk about it it's a good brother moment even though at that point I also like when when Kendall says can pinky dance because the whole episode Roman was really the one looping Shiv in like a lot. It was really heartwarming. Honestly, he just kept wanting to loop Shiv in. Kendall could take it or leave it. But I liked that when Kendall said can pinky dance, yeah, Roman was seriously. like, well, no, but, <laughs> and I really liked that scene, even though, I mean, they end up tanking it anyway. Like they did, they tank it. I'm not sure. I mean, they got an amazing deal out of it. They don't want to sell to him, but Either way, I thought it was a really good scene and uh, it it turned the episode, right? I We kind of expected that that was what was yeah. going to happen, that Kendall was going to get a little taste of being on top. It was 24 fucking hours and he's like, let's tank what everyone's worked so hard for. They say it themselves, six months of a deal. You killed my dad. It was six months. Let's fucking tank it. <laughs> like, it's wild, but it was still a good Well, moment. you asked too. Yeah. Well, you remember when you it, asked when you were like, do we think Kendall's going to tank it? Yeah. And we were like, yeah, we all agreed. Like he's totally going to be the one yeah. to tank it, which is really funny. Right. Okay, and everyone so, expects them to fuck it up, but not in an, in a, such an intentional way. I feel, yeah. you know, this, this episode was interesting because we always joke about how, like, obviously everyone on the show is a bad person. And like, we quote unquote, like them as characters, but I, our squad was getting bodied around like in every interaction, like it was hard. I, like, I don't want to say like them losing in the negotiations is like a favorite moment. So to more, a more positive spin, I think I love the scene of the, the non Roy's on the plane on the way there, just like strategizing. Cause I mean, Carolina, Carolina, Jesus got like a lot more spotlight. It felt like in this episode at times. And I just love Jerry's like speech after they're all like worrying. Cause like Hugo's, you know, like saying about how what the guy's like an ex-winner Olympian and then the one guy who was from um Kaleidoscope like the two guys that are in it they were in oh. Born on the Floor but like they're randomly in it again and they're in this in episode the guy the one guy is oh, the guy okay. who like puts his phone down and calls them like brutal motherfuckers is mm. in Kaleidoscope he's the guy that gets fired he gets framed I guess that's a spoiler but whatever um but i just liked them all going and they're like they're kind of worried and then jerry steps up and is like fuck these motherfuckers <laughs> like these soft ass europeans you know they're drunk on fucking vacation time like they don't know what it's like to be these wolves that that logan raised and i thought that was funny especially looking back now too because they all got literally bodied in every interaction but it was funny that jerry gives them that pump up speech yeah yeah my honorable mention there was going to be and i was almost going to do it my quote as well 
is, and I don't want to take anyone's quote. But I'm going to be mad because you already that Jerry quote was my quote, so I have a second quote. Oh fuck! Okay, I will stop. I will just stop. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'll do it at the end of the quotes. How about that? If we don't get to it. Okay, you go then. Okay, so I'm. I won't say the Jerry quote, but I do love her calling Logan a pathogen. It's amazing. Um, but my quote is Shiv. Yeah. And she says, let's just keep one of his old sweaters less racist on whether or not to keep ATN. And it's just <laughs> perfectly delivered and correct. And just in general, I was like, do we want ATN? Who cares? Why do we care about ATN? Remind me, please. Only because Logan wanted it. So it was nice that when they asked Shiv, she was just like, who the fuck cares? Like, get rid of it. Whatever. Yeah. That's a great question because, especially with the sweater, because I was seen online, I don't catch this. I don't think I'm smart enough in the moment to do so, but Roman was like dressing like Logan and might have been wearing like a sweater kind of looked Logan ish, is what I saw online. Who knows? Mm. But um, but that's a good point though, because Roman obviously has the like the daddy connection. But Kendall, I don't know why Kendall wants ATN so bad. I think he just wants to big dick. Matson, like That's you can right. just see him like getting there and he's like let's put him on the table and Matson's like god no small talk you don't know how to fucking do anything yeah. and frank's trying to coach him to tell a joke it's just he's so aggro and i think i think it's more for him like the little evil kermit dark yeah. kermit kendall that's a great point. um and roman yeah a lot of what i was seeing and a lot of what i feel is he just wants to do right by dad it's like dad yeah. you know and it's like Okay, we get it, but what the... Yeah, and for us, it's like, okay, it's been fucking two weeks, so like, let's get over it, but I guess in universe, it's been two days. I also, when Madsen gave the new number, meaning the 187 number, and we were at 144 without ATN, I was, like, holding my breath. I'm like, was that a good offer? Like, how am I? How do I know how many points more should ATN be in addition to Waystar? You know, I, yeah. I was truly, like, waiting for them to cue me in because I'm like, let me know because I have no idea what kind of offer that was. In retrospect, yeah, I was like, exactly. wow, $187 billion. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what I first thought, too. I, I was said, like, holy Per shit. share, girl. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm not the math person in this house, obviously. No. Jesus. I was like, wow. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and 10. I was trying to think of, like, yeah, what companies in the world would even be worth that? That's so funny. I mean, you got to, I point. figured, pay a lot of people out, so it didn't seem that far-fetched. I don't yeah. know. I don't All right, know shares so and stonks. I, don't I, uh, I can go next. So my quote is going to be a lighthearted quote, which I think might have longer implications, hopefully. For two characters that we love so shiv and tom getting in their little spat and tom's comeback of just your earlobes are thick and chewy like barnacle meat <laughs> it's just like he like flicks her up. ear doesn't he <laughs> yeah yeah it's just so ridiculous like she is like your shoes are stupid or whatever then he's like your ears are thick and chewy <laughs> it's I phenomenal love him. That's when so good. when she starts kicking dirt on his shoes, I'm like, these two are unhinged. They don't even know how to talk oh, to yeah. each other anymore. <laughs> no, it's so good. Did they have? <laughs> no, no oh. that's a great point. That's just was so. Fun. There was a lot of good quotes in this episode, but that one for me was just like, holy fuck, that is so funny. That's an all time Tom line. <laughs> I uh, had a related Tom and Siobhan one where Oscar was just like, oh, Tom, Tom of Shaban. Like he was oh, like, yeah. that's not of like ATN or anything. Like so yeah, that's, good. it just was again, such a good read. Um, And then my, uh, my number one quote I had was Connor, who's not, he's rarely seen, but largely yeah. heard on this episode. And he's like, I had to cancel on a room of middle-class whites in Cleveland. Like, I, just... <laughs> I tried so hard to work him into the executive summary and I just couldn't make the flow work because the scene was like so unrelated. It felt like, and I was like, ah, I'm not going to have to leave my boy out. I do love when Will is like, don't let them make fun of you. It was yes. really cute. It was yeah, good. Yeah, that was really good. That was really good. A backup one I had is, again, at the brunch, which is, I guess, happens probably right before that line to tom is hugo with the huge plate because they sabotage him and put their food onto his plate and then he's like i metabolize quickly because i'm dynamic and then he fucking basically shits on the guy for not getting a bronze medal and then turns to whoever and goes guy's a dick <laughs> i thought that was so funny the delivery was so good the way he said guy's a dick <laughs> yeah this episode 
afterwards, Alex can can vouch for me. I sat up and was like, that pumped me up. This <laughs> felt like I was like, that felt like one of the best episodes I've seen in a while. Yeah, was it was good. so fast. The writers wrote the hell out of this script. We're in this beautiful location again, which I love. It always heightens the episodes. And yeah. Matson was such a good. He's like our new villain, but he's so good. And he's so powerful. Like we're watching um true blood right now and he's a main character mm, in that yeah. and we just Suck got it. done yes okay we just got done watching an episode of season seven which he's in and i'm like it's he's just like feeling i watched him last night i watched him this morning i watched him today it's great <laughs> and um i loved watching him like absolutely big dick our boys make every one of the ways our people look stupid and then m- seemingly like be vulnerable in front of Shiv only to get her favor. He's not actually like yeah. he was just trying to make her be on his side so he can use her, I assume, even though it was a good episode for Shiv. Um, even though I think he was playing her a little bit, I do think that as far as Shiv episodes go in season four, this was a good one for her because she's been really devolving. And I think this was good. And I think we can decide right now on this podcast was Shiv drinking or doing uh, blow? <laughs> I would I say I don't no. think she did blow. How about that? I think she was just putting it up to her honest. lips, like maybe some, like just to, for show. But I think you're right because until Alex was like, "She's pregnant," I was like, <laughs> and at risk of of saying something that I just said because we're having some technical difficulties. I was quite blindsided by the blood brick and not really focusing yes. on whether she was actually drinking or not. I was just considering the level of insanity that Madsen's working with over there on the couch. He's really out there, huh? I, I think yes. it's part fucking with people and then part he's a bit of a mess too. And like, how does yeah. that actually play in somewhere like America is a valid thing, I think, for Shiv to say. And I... And uh, for me, if we're talking stocks and Shiv, I think this is the best she's looked in a while. He could easily play her, right? I, obviously, he's, I think he's playing everyone to some level. He was Logan as well, but I think he sees more Logan in her. Uh, he even said so, basically. And I think she's not aware of what her brothers are doing, so she's not overtly trying to fuck them, I don't think. And yeah. I, I think it could net out okay for her. <laughs> Just we'll have to see. I mean, she might have to endure some blood bricks, but... Yeah, that's, actually, care. that's a good point too about her i mean i don't know i feel like does she know that they were actually trying to tank the deal I feel like not to the degree they were you yeah, know. that's true i mean she's always said does have her finger on the pulse of like the news stuff like she brought up the kendall feeding the the news anti-logan stuff low-key kind of somewhat confronted him about him not actually but a little bit and I feel like one of the things Matson said that he knew they were trying to tank the deal was the negative press that was coming out. And I feel like she would have known about that. And I feel like she, that's, that's I guess, the tough thing about the show. And like we, I had sent that text message and we kind of agreed of, there's so much reading into like sarcasm and, and people lying and just looks that like you're trying to understand what they're thinking and what they actually feel about certain things. So the look that she gave at the end of the episode felt mm. like she knew she was getting one up on yeah, like the a knowing a knowing glance yeah yeah exactly i think she's happy to be in right if they're not going to keep her all the way in whether they're tanking a deal or yeah. not she's uh, like you know she's always going to have an iron in, in a few fires i think because she's the least trusting of of that of the ce bros and i don't blame her i think yeah no not at all you know it's interesting on the atn front as well that they said that Shiv, again, finger on the pulse, is like Mencken has a line straight to ATN, mm-hmm. like that's not okay. And the boys are like, mm, yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out later type of deal. But that is bad. And I, a lot of this stuff is like the business of it all goes right over my head. And I mean, Shiv later does say like, we're getting rid of Sid. She's fucking up. And in a surprise twist, Tom thinks when yeah. she's talking about shakeups, he's going to, She's going to talk about him, but um, e- even in the even in the tanking of it all, Madsen sees right through the boys. The boys couldn't get a single. They talk a strategy. They're like, we got to make sure that he thinks it's his idea. We got to 
we got to be sneaky. We got to make him walk away. And he's like, you Scooby doing ass bitches. What's yeah. going on? The Hanna-Barbera school for yeah, business. Like, exactly. That's just, <laughs> I, although I will say with Batson, I feel like compared to Kendall and Roman, he obviously comes across like he's just like dominating them completely in all of the conversations and such. But I just saw some interesting comparisons online of he is acting kind of the same way that Kendall was acting in season one with the Valter deal of like, it just gets to a point where he's like, I'm just going to say a number so big that you literally cannot say no to it. And I mean, we kind of know that ATN is a little bit of a, I, I mean, I guess we don't know whether like the, the health of it as a business kind of thing. But I mean, they do make like you we brought up, but you just said, Alex, of the whole like Matson's fit within U.S. media. And I don't think I would be so shocked if the deal turns out negative for him at all. You know what I mean? Like the way that Walter kind of just blew up. It doesn't see I mean, like, I, I again, like Kathleen said, the business stuff kind of goes over my head a lot. But like, are they still in a ton of debt? Or did Stewie no, and cause Stewie and Sandy, them, I, right? Yeah. Okay, they bought it up or whatever. I think I think ATN, they keep saying it's like the only profitable thing, sort of, yeah. or it is like the least overhead, like best bang for your buck is seemingly it. And Although, obviously the political aspect of having kind of a say in steering it. Yeah. Although we did get that math lesson, right, in episode one or two of it. It's 40 more than 15 pounds. <laughs> 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 so, good head for numbers yes that was um, a good impression <laughs> that you. was good and what so roman say in that episode reason. to nan pierce he was throwing around some after nine oh nine God, yeah. B? Yeah, <laughs> we got a lot of math right. lessons then. <laughs> yeah so but I, I don't think that there's any like go I, I don't think the goal was going to be to show that Matson is like a great businessman i think it could very well be that like this is also a bad business deal for him and it's kind of the idea that they're all just fucking assholes he started seeming like overly eager about it to me something was like he was going like kind of logan like i need this to go like when logan was like that with pierce back before the the stewie and sandys of it all he seemed a little like intense like this needs to happen like i need this to happen so yeah i wonder what that means what has he been what has he been up to that this has to happen for him that and this is something we brought up last night. Kyle, do the CE bros and Shiv need this deal to go through in order to buy Pierce? That's so Can weird. they buy Pierce with that? And, and aren't they on the hook for Pierce or do they just say, never mind, can't pay for it? Sorry. Yeah. I, it feels yeah, like I mean, a, something they already charged on their credit card and they have to figure it out. <laughs> no, I think they started probably terms and stuff, but and finding other backers is what it seemed like that guy. I forget his name already. Who was kind yeah, of helped short lived their strategist who was oh, short yeah. I, I know, I know or what something. he looks like, but I don't remember what his uh, name was. Yeah, but, yeah, but I, I, I guess I could easily see like them in the moment not even considering the Pierce aspect of it when they're like, We're gonna tank the deal. Well, yeah, but I also think they wanted they needed ATN to bring Pierce and kind of mm. steal their dad's vision was the sort of whole thing. Uh, and so I think Either way, it's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. So I yeah. think Shiv wants Pierce the most. Yeah, she so wants to get the fuck cares. away from Fox she Media. She cares lines. about yeah getting into that like lane of news quality. I feel like Kendall wanted Pierce because it was anti Logan, and Roman kind of got dragged along. Yeah. So yeah, that's actually a good aspect. I wonder what will happen now. I mean, While we we're no talking idea, yes, Shiv, let's just finish out with like Shiv and Tom in general. Yeah. So wait, Shiv. Do we think stocks are up or down? Because she's been a steady decline, I I think, yeah. for the first four episodes. I think no, nowhere but up at this point. I would say it feels up. She also runs that same line with Kendall almost where in last episode when he gets the CEO, it was like, okay, on the face, what a boon. Like, we're out here. But, you know, real Kendall fans know that that's actually probably the most <laughs> dangerous position for him to be in. Yeah. And I feel like an overly confident Shiv it's just a recipe for disaster because like is she actually in the position she thinks she's in or is there a lot more strings attached to where she's at and how she got there 
yeah, she's in the good spot of finding her groove, getting let in, and she shines there. But the second it feels something's promised or she gets too comfy, it's going to get ugly again, probably. Yeah. This feels like the first episode they weren't openly humiliating her for some reason. Like, it maybe it was just because of that fall last episode was so brutal. I don't think she was being cringy or humiliating the previous episodes, but there's a lot of things that were making me go, oh, but... Tough. But this was the first episode where at least she was like grooving. Like Alex said, she had some good one liners. Um, hopefully she wasn't drinking. I really don't think she was. No, I think, I think she had was. to pretend, right? No one's supposed to know. Yeah, that. but she was like bricked up after that conversation with Mattson enough to be yeah. like, let's get dinner, Tom. Let's yeah, see what this is about really again. <laughs> well, that's also true thinking of when you, if you could watch a cut of the episode that was just Mattson interactions with boys followed by all matching interactions with shiv like shiv would come out like a superstar mm -hmm. because yeah. she can handle his weirdness and like the eccentricity i guess is is the word i could potentially be looking for in that like like he says she can take a joke she can punch back well she understands kind of how maneuver in that conversation like kendall and roman like could not like almost get out from under their own feet in like starting the conversation and responding to anything like it was it was honestly a mess i so. think he brings like an entirely different energy to the shiv combos like i think that's i'm just true. gonna go on a limb and say he probably treats women differently and i don't mean in a disrespectful way but i think he doesn't feel a For threat sure. he doesn't feel like he has the big dick i think he underestimates them right because then shiv's giving like jerry and carolina cosigns and he doesn't question it his, his girl who i'm already forgetting ebba. Ebba, ebba like he's doing crazy things like i think it's sort of that logan mentality of like women are a bit of a weakness or a blind spot where you That's underestimate them and let them close and maybe they can play you after all so i think we'll see I mean, his two things were when Shiv walks up, he's like, "Can should I hug you or is this going to be a yeah. lawsuit or whatever? And then he calls Ebba an estrogen uh, air freshener. Air freshener. And, and she's like, yeah, <laughs> if they ever fire me, they're done. I have receipts yeah. and she, receipts in gallons and liters of blood. And blood. <laughs> yeah. So I guess yeah. that that's a good question that I have is, so obviously Carolina is our superstar head of comms. Ebba is his head of comms, but Carolina wasn't on the kill list, presumably because Shiv talks positively about her in that interaction at night. And so Shiv tells him, I mean, obviously it's just an assumption, like jumping to that maybe Ebba was fired, but do you think that he fired Ebba? No, to me, it's like, who are they going to keep on four way star ATN? You know, right. I don't think that everyone who's working at his current company, Gojo, is yeah, going to right, now just right. take on extra accounts. They could move over and maybe transfer and do different things, but I think they still need some people to run. But yeah. I think Matson's probably like, I mean, look at all these, like the nepotism conversations yeah. they were having. He was like, Jesus Christ, I saw a TikTok of the translation of what how that what they were talking about in Swedish and it was basically just like Jesus Christ like they there's a thousand of them and they're suckers you know I, I don't know the <laughs> translation I only watched it once but it was just more of the same so I think that it's just keep the Compton people but like they said the last company they acquired 10% retention probably the same type of deal only yeah. the legitimate people because someone like Madsen would rather start fresh because He's not Logan, and those people are just, you know, cousins and stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. on any merger acquisition, you keep on a lot of people for the beginning to help understand what the fuck is going on at the part shop before you yeah. start, you know, part making shop. cuts. So, <laughs> ooh, when when he calls Kendall and Roman the tribute band, that was I. Great. That was a 10 out of 10 insult because, man, are they not a tri yeah. tribute That's band? Whoever insult. wrote that line. Yeah. yeah, that is the insult for them. It's like beautiful. Yeah. Tie yourself in the back. It's funny. They're, he just is like, he just comes to the table ready to piss those two off. And he knows oh, yeah. exactly it's how. Cool. I mean, Roman is very easy, especially because I think his grief is coming out that way. And he's so sensitive. He's like Roman's revenge. That's the, that's the like yeah. thing he's on. But he doesn't even say anything mean about Logan to Shiv. So he knows how to like work yeah, that's a great these point. people. He, honestly, Absolutely. He, he, Logan as a way to compliment Shiv. Yeah. So it's very interesting to see that as well. Meanwhile, he just absolutely shits on his whole legacy on top yeah. of the mountain and pisses on it too. Okay. 
I mean, so what do we think about the day? I guess very quickly before it sounds like we're, we can move on to the Steve bros, the other heavy hitters of the episode, but shit and Tom dinner. I can't wait to see it. I mean, yeah. Tom didn't say yes. Tom was yeah. like, well, um, and of it's course she there. took a call in the middle of it, but I'm excited to see it. I, I don't know where it's going. I think Shiv stock up Tom stock down. He's know. not Sid's, on the kill list, but he's on the kill list. Sid's on the out. They, Roman, they did admit that he's doing well running ATN. They were just going to fire him if Shiv wanted to. And she said no to that. So Tom's. Yeah, I guess just for the episode, I mean, him being so cringy to Madsen is what comes to the forefront of my mind. Yeah, yeah. And but I guess you're right. I guess he is. I'd say he's safe. It's stable. It's stable it's tapered time. down since Logan died a little bit. Yeah. Shaky. Ah, I mean. I don't know. I feel like his relationship, if he actually is in love with Shiv, the signs are there for, like, it feels better than it did two episodes ago, three episodes ago, even last episode. So, yeah. Tommy boy, who can say? Endgame. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I mean, obviously I'm in. You know I'm in. We're all in. <laughs> all right. So uh, we can move into just do Kendall and Roman kind of together. Um, I, I love the combo of the two of them, but they're just so bad at doing their job like they fumble their way into five extra points and everyone <laughs> is really cheering them on at the end like undeniable 192 is undeniable so <laughs> and good. they're like fuck like, sure it sure is <laughs> yeah like one of the last scenes i watched before we caught up we got on this was kermit Kendall kind of convincing Roman and he's like it's fucking feel the force time like we gotta then it's just like a bunch of nonsense phrases about like them and the future of the company and it's like these he is such an idiot <laughs> most of the time it's like so crazy like you said uh, earlier Alex you don't know what they want like even Mattson says like you like just tell me what you guys want. You guys don't have any idea like what you want so how can we have a negotiation? They're just so bad at it and the fact that they're, like it took Kendall getting upset to be like, you know, we're good at this shit. Like we should just do it forever. Like it should be the two of us. And it's like, oh my God, fellas. 24 hours since they've been appointed. <laughs> yes. Like literally nothing has changed. Burn bright, don't fade away. Kendall's, <laughs> motto. Kendall's motto. Literally. Yeah. Uh, Kendall did the smear campaign against his dad. Shiv brought it up. And he kind of said, Hugo, like go get rat fucker Sam and whatever. But it was him, obviously. I think the word that's not the end of that. I think that may come back. If it doesn't, I'd be shocked. They made it seem like that was going to be a big yeah. thing. Um, but in general, in the first scene, when Kendall c walks into that, J like from the Jay-Z song and he goes so in, good. gets the applause, oh, he goes in and him and Roman do a handshake, dap each other up and they talk. I'm like, these two look legit. Yeah. I was in. I'm like, they can run a company. And then they slowly kind of devolve. But it was a joy to watch them, even if they were fucking up. They're like my two favorite fuck ups in the world, especially when they're in it together. Like when Roman starts losing it on Matson and Kendall just kind of lets it happen. And then later he's like, it could play, man. It could play. It could <laughs> Not play. What we want it. <laughs> it could play. I love that. They, they come from such different angles of it, but end up on the same fucked up wavelength about yeah. like this. Definitely operating from ego and or emotion, I feel, is like the whole thing. Roman more emotion. Kendall more like ego in his dark Kermit. Yeah. Um, yeah it's... For sure. I, I felt too, I guess, in the original negotiation and then the one that happens outside that's fairly impromptu it felt like that roman was almost like letting kendall like take all of the hits i felt like mattson was talking directly to kendall about all the negative things and he wasn't doing so towards roman but then i guess at the end of the episode when roman finally blows up it kind of is like roman is there just absorbing all of it and getting more and more and more and more upset until he finally loses it himself because when it's like outside and they're talking about like the tribute band and the talking about like the brand's terrible and it's a part shop and stuff and kendall's getting pissed and then shiv is someone that actually chimes up and kind of steps in and somewhat not diffuses it but takes a little bit of the weight off of kendall having to respond to every single comment and that kind of struck me until Roman blows up. And I was like, ah, okay, that's our Roman. Like, the, like you said, a little bit sensitive, emotional, just kind of was letting it build up, build up, build up until he blew up. I mean, Roman was saying what we're all thinking. I mean, I think it's that episode three was really emotional. 
But their relationship is so fucked up. I think we're kind of already forgetting that literally two or three days ago, their dad died. And when yeah. he says you couldn't wait a few extra days, you couldn't wait a week like you had to fucking do it now. Yeah, I, I to be honest, I had forgotten because I was just so hyped to be here. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm like, yeah, fuck this guy for doing that. Like he does it on purpose. It was calculated. I don't blame Roman for blowing up. And when he says, I fucking hate you. And Lucas is like, you just fucked yourself. Like there, it was an acting class. Like yeah. Kieran Culkin, it's confirmed. He is going to be Emmy nommed as a, or he's going to attempt. He's definitely going to be nominated. Um, but for your consideration as lead actor, which is well-earned. I mean, him yeah. and Kendall are both, they're lead actors. They they don't yep. they're not supporting actors. They are the lead. So I'm just so like happy for Kieran Culkin because he's excellent. And I think he's been so excellent this season. Um, but that scene was phenomenal. You know, it's just gonna blow up. And then I was really shocked by Lucas just being like, OK, then 192. I mean, good for him. That is the ultimate big dick energy move to be like, you're fu I thought when he said you're fucked, like I I didn't think he was going to tank it, but I thought Lucas was going to really do something bad. I think yeah. there's still plenty of time. I think yeah. it, when Roman was like, we're never going to sell to you. He's like, yeah, now watch. I mean, he might do what Kendall did to Walter and just fucking turn it inside out and run it over with a truck. You know, I mean, do we did do we watch previews? I didn't, obviously. But I didn't. Oh yeah, okay. we did last yeah. night. We did. Yeah. Well, I'm just yeah, I'm just curious if I obviously Forget a very it. easy low hanging fruit storyline is them trying to maneuver to still kill the deal, even though it's would be essentially illegal and a terrible idea. But I could easily see them. I, I just don't see them accepting defeat so easily. I cannot remember this fucking preview. I want to say it's alluding to it being his funeral, finally. Like some event was being that. figured out. Some I'm excited for that uh, right now. I think um, two episodes from now is going to be like the election stuff. Probably. So I think the episode's called America Decides. <laughs> and it is confirmed, Tyler, um, friend of the pod, Tyler, has been texting me as he listens. It's confirmed that every episode is one day. So the span of okay. this Ten is days? only a week and a half, yeah. which is crazy. <laughs> What are we going to yeah. have for the for the fam? So the Shiv baby thing is just going to be as like a, a dramaturgical device to <laughs> a, about him and her and Tom's relationship. Like we won't actually get the child. I can't wait till she tells Tom, though. That's yeah. going to be a good ass scene. Tom's going to his head's going to fall off. He's going to be oh, so yeah. excited to be a dad. Yeah. It's going to. OK, that's a good one. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Um, Anything else on Ken and Rome? Where just do we up think or down? Yeah. Oh, it's so tough. I, I like they have so much more money now and they have reputationally they've quote unquote secured this deal despite their best efforts to not do so. So it's kind of like the arrows pointing up in terms of like how they look on the outside. But I feel like inside their arrows are so down. Yes, so it, correct. Yeah, they're, they're a tough evil, I think. But where's the money coming, baby? On the outside. Let's yeah, go. That's true. That's true. We'll <laughs> As a see. Kendall girl, I got the money. Yeah, that's I mean, I guess, yeah, if this was like an actual market, like we would see them getting all that money. And I'm sure our individual shares would go way up. Whatever. All right. Um, Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to just more committed to a point. No, I was just going to um pivot it to Jerry mm -hmm. um, just because I thought she had a great episode. She didn't like humiliate herself like everyone else did. And just the henchmen in general, like being so like wanting to help and the kids not taking any of their help. And then at the end, when they're talking through the kill list and Frank's like, well, it's all speculation. And Carl's like, whatever Carl says, he's like, let the party roll or whatever the let fuck. the good times roll. Yeah. Let the what party roll. That's what people say. Let the party roll. Uh, <laughs> but it was so good. Like, I love those three. I love when they said mom and dad food in the fridge. Like, I, I they're perfect. Yeah. Who needs Logan when you've got those parents? It's so good. Um, but I think Jerry stock is up. I just wanted yeah. to say that because <laughs> I feel like Jerry stock was trending down when Logan was alive. And now it's it's way up one one little one little endorsement from Shiv, and she is, uh, she's all up. So I'm good. And yeah. Carolina, up, well, up I feel like Carolina and Jerry, objectively, when you hear that 
the transition of the company is going to be one towards a meritocracy. I feel like automatically that puts Carolina and Jerry on a higher pedestal because they are like pretty much the only two. It feels like that have been shown to be genuinely competent at their job consistently. Yep. So, oh, and Jess. Them. Jess is back. Yes. Yes. Jess that is was back going and getting... to be my uh, my my quote was going to be the great job, guys. When she, like they all have like the big moment. And then it's like way more personal that she like waits for it to die down. And then she turns and it's like, great job, guys. Like she felt that like that was such a nice moment, especially for us who we've been begging for Jess to come back. So that one like made me smile ear to ear. And she helped get the kill list right with Greg. True. I mm-hmm. feel like they're, they're doing some detective work, some Nancy Drew Fucking shit. Just... It just makes me laugh because, again, Kendall's like, I need like a 500 foot screen and uh, uh, the, the, the just the raw footage. <laughs> of... <laughs> yeah. And she makes a cut. Happen. Yep, she sure does. Happen. Everyone watching it and falling asleep is so funny. And it was interesting because I feel like this is the first time we're actually, besides thinking about parks, like the sexual assault at the parks, this is the first time we're getting actual like content of what they do, yeah. like the news and whatever. But this feels like out of left field, the movies, like we knew they did movies, but this is like maybe the first time they actually mentioned details of this big blockbuster they have coming out. Besides the turkey one that Roman yeah, didn't, that Roman didn't right. do. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was a great storyline. Yeah, yeah, true. But it, it felt new. Left. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, it's just nice. I guess it's them actually being involved in the company. They have to actually cause... know what the fuck is going yeah, on. And we're yeah. like... Ten hundreds of millions of dollars are going in reshoots. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I just I, I love the shot of Carl and Frank to continue with the kind of henchmen of Carl and Frank outside the sauna. Just, you know, legs crossed, knowing that golden parachutes come in, just like, you know, what and they even have a line where it's like they're talking to the people in the sauna and they're like they're in there in the window like fucking peeking duck. I would <laughs> I have bet money so that would have been your quote. It was I love me some fucking Carl. And I really thought about it, but I had to go Jerry because Jerry's was like, yeah, yeah, pump me up. It was good. It was a battle cry. I really, this whole episode pumped me up in a time where it was hard to pump me up. I was like, let's fucking go. It felt that it was so dialogue heavy. And I really love when the writers are just in their bag writing an excellent. And that that setting, I can't say it enough. Like that location gorgeous and and Matson's on top being like what whatever the fuck like who who cares about this whatever <laughs> this guy is sick do you ever you ever seen the movie ex machina i saw a tiktok saying it was in the same house yeah, right it's the same house yeah that's a house that? i thought it was like a ski resort either way it's epic, one of the one know? of the buildings on the compound was in the Ooh. movie ex machina yeah. this is a better way to say <laughs> Yeah, I just was going to say it was like a return to form, like opening up with Kendall going to work and blasting so the old school hip hop and then the amazing location that we'll never see in our entire fucking lives off of a screen. Like it just yeah. felt it, like very much paying homage to the whole vibe of the show. Yeah, I also really like the the again, we keep saying this, but Lucas is the big dick energy with the audacity to have them have to come all the way to the top of the mountain, that slow-mo oh, yeah. ski lift thing to it's get like them up top. It's 101. Yep. The, the intimidation factor, like, you're coming up to me. We're in this, like, mm-hmm. isolated location at the top of the mountain. Like, it's it's phenomenal. Your dad's on ice. <laughs> like, just, yeah, like, oh layering the fucks he can't give and, like, the hurdles they have to go through just for him to literally spit in their face somewhere it's it's he's a master at it it makes you so mad that it's like this guy has this much money this one guy this douchebag who who is honestly depressed he's not happy yeah, he has he's a lot just, of his own issues he, he sure. really does i mean think about in previous like in the first episode we meet him at kendall's birthday party he is like down the only thing that makes him happy is peeing on roman's phone that's so the funny. only thing that can make him smile <laughs> Everything's boring to him, you know? Same with Logan. It's like you lose the plot on life when you're that rich and you think you've seen it all or experienced it all or that you could, so it doesn't even interest you at that point. It's Yeah. He's just another another Logan in that way. The fact of him being on the mountain does nothing for him is insane. That place is incredible they're yeah. so lucky they get to shoot there no matter no wonder they're all crying <laughs> yeah, so much true. miss each other miss the locations miss the experiences like this show 
has taken the, taken them to so many cool places. Yeah. You're getting billionaire experiences while getting paid to film and do like a career that most people would like kill for, you know? Yeah, yeah I'm so yeah. sad this is ending. We got some time. We got some time. Yeah, we did. Have, we did half a season. I have two parting shots. So my first parting shot is going to be that if this is the beginning of the end for Hugo, what a fucking Hugo episode. This was <laughs> Loki, like almost his episode. He was so good in this episode. When he's talking to the guy and he's like, I heard he like had a shot at their place to end up fourth. Like he's a choker. He's a choker. Like he was like, he had so much personality in this episode. It was great. So he's obviously on the kill list. So we'll see how uh how he sticks around if they're able to because i don't like that none of them have any allegiance to him so he's kind of just no dust floating in the wind at this point all he has to hang his hat on is that super fast metabolism and then <laughs> number two is that scene with greg and bringing up the economist i think is the number one cringiest scene of the entire show i literally did not watch it on my second watch i skipped through it i could not yeah, it's just he does something to me now and that scene was horrific i said to alex i really thought greg was about to pull out some genius when he started talking because tom was flopping and i thought greg actually was going to know something about something and matt was going to be like huh but nope double flop really oh. belly flopped all around town bad stuff well, can we reflect on how they were literally like will france make it like that's such yeah, a fucking yeah. jab at a whole country <laughs> and it's just such a douchey thing to be talking about like if i yeah. walked up to a conversation they're like will france make it i'd be like go fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> i did okay. read it and i feel like again a part of the beauty of the show is that uh like it's really open to interpretation obviously you can read into thoughts words looks however you want and i saw a lot of talk about tom like doing well in that like showing like the mindset that he has like doesn't care if France itself survives, it's more of like from the business perspective of US media, which is what uh, Matson is buying at this retreat, there doesn't fucking matter what happens in France. Like the US residents don't give a shit. Like it, that's kind of how it is. So yeah. I, I would have never thought about that myself, but. Playing up that he knows the audience and that just playing that like dumb American card that I feel like, yeah. you know, Tom likes to kind of endear himself to people by sort of beating them to the punch. And and he did that well there as well. Yeah, there was actually the one when Greg, I guess, kind of fumbles through everything and I almost poked my eyeballs out. Uh, they say like, who are you? When they ask him who he is and Greg's response is therein lies a tale is genuinely <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like that's such a, that is a perfect Greg response. That's a great Greg line. He has been really bad lately, especially, yeah. but that line made me laugh out loud. <laughs> therein He's lies like Greg tale. Hirsch, Ori, Greg Ori <laughs> Hirsch. <laughs> I know. I was like, what is Ori and then Greg Ori? <laughs> oh, God. He is that, so dumb. Those were peak Greg moments that sprinkled with yeah. some of the hell. cringiest <laughs> hell. Yeah. All time. The Norwegian wood line was pretty good as well. <laughs> He's such a coxback. We have to say, like, we can only hope that somewhere out there, Matson is out there listening to Binge Town TV with his headphones mm -hmm. on, getting absolutely fucked by some girl. Oh, yeah. Slide and he's not ball. actually paying attention. He's just listening to Binge Town TV. And for that, Matson, we thank you. Yeah, what a absolutely terrific tidbit to end this episode on, <laughs> and a, a picture to leave in every listener's mind out there, and maybe an idea for every listener out there. Who's to say? I'm not going to suggest or deny any of that. Uh, so that is what episode five. So we're officially halfway, or over halfway, I guess, technically speaking for season four of HBO's Succession. This episode was set up the kill list. It totally lived up to that name, the hype, everything. This was a fantastic episode of Succession. Hopefully they're only gonna get better from here on out. It's gonna be hard to touch three, but I have high hopes for the uh, the rest of the season for sure. Uh, once again, as I said at the top of the hour, at the top of the episode, if you wanna support us, best way is just subscribe. Whatever you're listening on, whatever you're watching on, just click that subscribe subscribe button wherever it is. And then go to bingetowntv.com for super easy access to all of our episodes if you're interested in other things we're doing. I mean, we're doing what Yellow Jackets season two has been fantastic, and our coverage of it has been equally fantastic. Uh, the Mandalorian season, what is it, three now? I'm yes. not a Star Wars guy, so I'm tough. 
Okay, season three of The Mandalorian. Really we just actually put out, so The Last Kingdom, uh, Seven Kings Must Die, correct? Yeah, Must Die. Uh, just That movie just came out. We just recorded our episode on it. It's out on YouTube. And for your ears only, what's that, audio? That is what audio is. That would be audio, yeah. Yeah, that's audio. And uh, before I say something else stupid, I'm just going to wrap this episode up. So we are Bingetown <laughs> TV, and thank you for listening. And fuck off. And fuck the fuck off. We did it.